Um, it's going to be tough, uh, but I think it's worth hearing. I think it's worth talking about because what I used to do is ignore it. I came from a high school that was 98.6% white, and now I work here. And so this is truly the definition of a transformation poem. Um, what I thought to be true in my naivety and what I am now. So this is for Gregory. There was a book Dr. Seuss wrote once that always made for a good bedtime story. It was about the Lorax who stood up for the trees that he loved because the trees could not speak for themselves. I'm the Lorax. I speak for the trees. I speak for the trees for the trees have no tongues. And unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. I stopped watching the news because everything I saw was too depressing. My peaceful, mostly stable, middle-class life could not be bothered by the tales of the faraway land of Philadelphia, which was located a mere 40 miles from my picket-fenced yard. I didn't want to ruin my good mood by reading about the faceless lists of the murdered and murderous, so I just didn't. Why should I care if it doesn't affect me? And in my naivety, I accepted that as a legitimate question. Day and night, I was tired of seeing the same old headlines because gun violence doesn't make for good bedtime stories. I didn't realize how much innocence was being stripped from those suffering in silence because the violence they experienced didn't make the cut for the 10 o'clock news. But I refused to face the idea that there were more, more people, more human beings confused as to why someone had to intrude on their sense of security. I had no excuse. And then I moved here. And I fell in love with the people I had never had the pleasure of knowing until I became a teacher. And those bedtime stories were more like nightmares, except they were real. And you can't wake up. I don't fit in here. It is clear that all of my experiences are not coherent with the struggles and tears of my students. My past does not consist of tragedy and brutality, and I frequently feel like I am not worthy to teach someone that understands much more about the world than me. Each day I am much more of a student than I am a teacher. One by one, their violent pasts make their way to the surface in my classroom, but never to the media, because there is a surplus of untold realities. No wonder my students feel worthless without purpose. Their voices feel wordless. I don't know why, but they let me inside of their world full of unpredictable pain, but powerful resilience. There was nothing about it that made sense to me, but I tried to learn and maybe even provide a sense of safety, and for some reason, they let me. I waltzed in with my stereotypes and prejudices, assuming that whoever I saw on the news was there as a product of stupid decisions, not realizing how easy it is for my students to fall victim to violence because they merely exist. And all of a sudden, news had relevance. I forced myself to confront headlines because this time, one of the students could be mine, and one day, he was. Southwest Philly teen gunned down, it read. It was hours before his birthday, and I knew there was a family out there in shambles. This young man will never see 19 candles. Then I realized every time I've changed the channel to avoid a story that I didn't feel like handling. I was ignoring someone's baby. And all of my students who have ever felt worthless without purpose did not have to feel wordless anymore because I have a voice and they have voices, and we are louder together than one who feels voiceless. And if Dr. Seuss can give a voice to the trees, then there has to be a way for you and for me to pervade society with your trials and stories, because the excuse that it doesn't affect me isn't a reality anymore. It affects the entirety of humanity when one of us is hurting. And if people like us care a whole awful lot, pain can't diminish our hope. It cannot.